OK, folks, Falta River Harnash, good evening, Claudio. Welcome, welcome back to the programme. It's just 11.33. My guests have arrived in the studio. It has been called a really exciting project. Cork student Simon Meehan crowned the winner of the BT Young Scientist exhibition and he's joined uh, with his uh, parents here. Uh, he's joined with Jeremy and uh, Bridget Lucy and, of course, Senan as well. So... For a start, I suppose, uh, can I congratulate you, Simon, in what's been hailed, I suppose, as a wonderful achievement. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Tell me a little bit about the project that you undertook. Okay. So, what, well, as I've said to most people, um, what happens exactly is that I took nine separate herbs, very locally found um, in my local vicinity, and I suspended them in a solvent. And then this extracted the nutrients, or the constituents rather, mm. into a liquid form that I could then manipulate or then test on agar. Yeah, because it apparently, uh, what you did, you tested the leaves of the blackberry plant. Yes, yes. Now, everybody, I suppose, has been very familiar with the blackberry plant, and of course we took it for granted, but very few people realised, I suppose, that the leaves of the blackberry plant contained... Uh, uh, an antidote for a, a disease, I think, called staph. What is it? It's called yeah. staphylococcus. I think it's staphylococcus. Yes. Staphylococcus. Yes. Pardon my, oh, pardon my French, sure. but uh, it's called staph for short. Yes. And staph, apparently, from what I can gather, is um, there's a superbug uh, with staph. Uh, from M- MRSI is linked MRSA, to staph as well. Yeah. 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 It's linked to us oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, MRSA is a strain of staph aureus. And what that means is that methicillin was used in the 60s and 70s, but then people were taking it for flus, for coughs, for colds, basically everything. And um, this made it res- made the bacterium resistant very quickly. So this became known as MRSA. Yes, because we've all known, as I said, that like, and uh, MRSA recently, as you said there, has uh, become resistant oh, yeah. to all the antibiotics. And I know the doctors are kind of warning us about this for years. Look, that overuse of antibiotics is going to basically, for want of a better word, educate these antibodies to, to very good, you yeah. know, to, co- yeah. to counteract this, you know. Yeah. But uh, I suppose you've got an awful lot of influence from your grandfather. Huge, yes. Now, your grandfather was basically what they call, I suppose, a herbalist. Well, I would say that not exactly a herbalist. He was self-taught and he did have a degree in botany, but he was more of a, what would you say, Mum? What do you call it? I suppose he had a lifelong interest in in botany and yes. in ecosystems. So it wasn't just looking at any individual plant, we'll say, but its environment and, and so on and so mm. forth. So I suppose, you know, even when I was a child, whether I liked it or not, there would have been a, a botany lesson every time we went for a walk, which is quite frequent, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yes. he'd say, yeah. you see that there, you know, oh, this is quite early this year for, for seeing those flowers. And he'd say, this is not a buttercup. This is a lesser celandine, you know. So you couldn't go anywhere without having this education, whether <laughs> yes. they liked it or not. And I suppose Simon was particularly influenced by my father because they got on great. So anytime they'd go for a walk, I'd say Simon paid probably more attention to my father than I ever did, you know. See, the apple uh, doesn't fall far <laughs> every time. Yes, but I think, my, I think my, my, it was worth my, my father's while waiting for Simon to come along because at least he had somebody who would be completely of the same mind as himself and would take in the information that um, was provided um, gratis uh, whenever they were out in the garden or going for yeah, yeah. But I suppose turning our, turn our attention again, Simon, uh, yes. and I suppose back in our grandfather's time, uh, of course, it would it be fair to say that they weren't I suppose, as well up in the scientific knowledge that we are now. And I suppose when you go back, uh, even before your grandfather's time there, the older folk amongst had various cures for this and they knew what herbs and what, what was in a certain herb to cure a certain, a, certain anti, a certain disease or whatever the case may be. Yes, and as a certain um, news reporter commented, they said it was interesting, if I say myself, uh, how the combination of science and, in, and old remedies was used. And I would definitely agree with that because... Remedies, as you said, it was used back then, mm. hundreds of years ago. But they weren't aware, late. basically, oh, yeah. of yeah. the composition of what was yes. in these. All they knew that, oh, a certain herb like St. John's Wort was good for A, B and C, mm. and Precisely. that was it. Yeah. And it ended there. But now, I suppose, yes. in this, I won't say enlightened age, but in this scientific age, yes. the likes of you can delve a little bit deeper. Thank you. Yes, I'd say that is correct. And that is one of the main points of my project, to delve even deeper, as you said. 
and discover what are the active constituents, what are really causing the effect in that plant and can we find it in other plants and let's say find antibiotics quicker than just let's say testing, reproducing, testing, reproducing in a lab. That could take years and this might be able to eradicate that altogether. Is it possible that it could eradicate it? I think that it would be. That's that, like this is this is mind boggling, so to speak, isn't yes. it? Because you know, as I say, antibiotics are practically on the way out, uh, and people have been going to we say foreign countries like South Africa or whatever yes. to get me to collect various herbs. Yes. These herbs are on our doorstep. Precisely, and that's what I'm trying to prove as well. That we do not need to keep seeing science as sophisticated and needing to discover, go to such lengths to discover these things, when, as you said, these are right outside our back doors. And, you, you know, you picked, the, the, you picked the blackberry plant. Yes, Would lot, among others. Among, yes. among others. Yes. Would every plant, every plant, I suppose, would every plant have some kind of a little hidden anecdote in it? And that's actually what my grandfather said to me uh, many times, and he would say to me, uh, God always had a use for every plant. If God did not have a use, then it would not be here. And he said, another thing was that he, now, possibly people might think this is contradictory. I think otherwise. Um, he said that of most plants, most of which are toxic to humans, we have developed a way of adapting to their toxicity within the plant. Now, I think what you're Sorry, what was your question exactly? Because I, I've, I've gone away from the topic and I forgot. Yeah, no, b- basically that every plant, yes. every plant, and your opinion, does every plant hold some kind of anecdote, be it how small or how large? I feel that there would be. For example, fungi, for example, they you hear of people go, using um, uh, perfectly poisonous mushrooms and fungi to treat certain certain illnesses or certain viruses. And this is this is just... This is a uh, proof that we can use things that e- are even toxic. Mm. So I would agree, yes, there, that most plants, if not all, have a certain um, factor that can be beneficial to us as humans. Yeah. We said earlier on, of course, that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Your mum is also a lecturer, <laughs> isn't she? I am, yes. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, <laughs> you, you know, basically, Simon, you had it coming from all sides. Yes. You had it trickled <laughs> down. like, And as I said, you know, that usually happens. My oh, yeah. father, for instance, was an electrician. I became an electrician <laughs> as well because I kind of grew up with it. I yes. grew up with wires and plugs and all that stuff. And you did exactly the same. Oh, yes. Now, what I would say is that, now people might think this is ridiculous to go into it, but um, what I would say is that I have spent time over this project. Of course, you're going to find people that say, oh, he didn't do X, Y and Z. And I know my parents would probably disagree with me for bringing <laughs> this up. And I'm sure that it might be a bit controversial. But um, I'd say that I did do this project and I've really enjoyed it right the way through. And before winning, Miss Lyon, my science teacher, did comment that I had mentioned that I want to keep going. I was actually planning on coming back next year and saying, oh, great, I can finish it next year. And then I was told, you're banned by VT. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, <laughs> a bit of a setback. But um, No, folks, lovely. this yes. lad talking and I have to remind you again this lad is only 15 <laughs> what does the future hold for him can I ask you the question what do you think the future holds for you are you going to develop this obviously you are oh yeah of course this is a lifetime yes um, but not a money spinner that's for sure this is science for science and not for money at all this is for not just benefiting ourselves but benefiting the planet that we are on instead of destroying it and hence destroying ourselves Um, But I would say that the main thing for now is to promote STEM subjects as well as continue my own project. That STEM really needs to be brought up in the ranks and prioritised and needs to be... um, that needs to be familiarised with most of the population. Yes. Can you see a situation that we will eventually, Simon, get away completely from antibiotics? Or will they always be with us? Oh, well... It's because like, at the way, yeah. uh, at the moment, at the way they're being dished out, I know the doctors tell us, look, that before we take an antibiotic for a flu, a cold, a cough or a pain yes. in a toe or something like that, no, they're sick. Hold on a second now. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you see a situation where they will be eventually mm. going and we'll be depending on the, some of the, like, the discoveries that you made? Well, you see, I think that it's inevitable that uh, bacteria in particular will overcome us as humans because they're 
if you if you put let's say somebody if, if let's say that you keep treating a certain patient or a certain group of people with a certain with a certain antibiotic for example the bacterium will adapt it's inevitably going to adapt in order to survive. As in, if you... Um, if well, this is, if Pat, this is Pat, we'll go back to Darwin's theory, basically, yes. you know, that everything from one cell onwards yes. was going to try and educate itself. So oh, yes. as we humans yes. do. As we did as yes. well. As in, well, we didn't get to here without having to try, fail, try, well, fail, yes. try, try again. And... Um, uh, you can certainly see that in bacteria, especially with mesocillin. I mean, that's a perfect example where the bacterium uh, adapted, not exactly um, taught itself, but definitely adapted to dealing with mesocillin, thus creating MRSA, which now makes it very difficult to kill, which would also say that uh, to the bacterium's, uh, to the bacterium's uh, perspective, we're the big monster over here that's trying to kill it. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. It's just trying to survive because that is its natural habitat. It's a survival, yeah. We're killing animals, we're killing plants, but we never see ourselves as the huge monsters that are destroying our own planet. Yes, so in fact, obviously we have this parochial view of ourselves yes. and we think <laughs> we're, the, we're the victims. We're not, yes. you know, we're, yes. the, we're, the, we're the aggressors, so yes, to speak. We are. You know? Yes, we so in some ways, now I wouldn't say that I'm, um, in some ways, I'm very, of course, I'm happy to have won the young scientist for, vi- that's for finding a, that, That's this. a point because you brought in the, the, a wonderful trophy oh, that, the, that, we, that we saw so much on television over the last couple of, uh, the, the last couple of days, really. Yes. And again, again, can I congratulate you for your huge oh, achievement? Thank you. Because, as I said, like, Mulligan Oiga, this is where <laughs> the youth is going. Thank and, you. of course, uh, you got the seven hot the seven thousand five hundred <laughs> euro in yes. your back pocket, and as well, you're going to Bletchley Park. I understand. I am with my science teacher, who deserves it more than anyone. She's been trying for thirteen years and hasn't complained once, and she really, really <laughs> deserves this point where she can finally say, "Ah, my, my, finally, my um, my child yes. prodigy is after coming out of my child prodigy. Yeah, no. yeah. that would yeah. be more my brother." <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, but again, as I said, you're going to Bletchley Park, and I'm sure for a young lad like you, it will be an absolute eye opener. You'll learn all about the Enigma machine and oh, yes, Toddy yes. and all the rest of it. You know, I can't wait. I you loved, can't, yeah. I loved World War not World War Two, but I mean, I loved um, the history and behind World War Two. Well, you're going to get enough of it in Bletchley Park. <laughs> uh, can I turn over to a, a slightly different topic because I do believe I'm I'm joined, of course, as I said, with uh, as it with. Uh, Simon here. I'm joined by Jeremy Meehan. Jeremy, uh, you're very, very quiet in all this, and of course, you're a native of Yall, aren't you? I am. I am no old bar- Well, born in born in the bonds in Cork, but they, they got rid of me pretty quick and <laughs> reared reared. Oh, it was Mrs. Tours nursing home for us. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And my, yeah. my mother used to talk about that very much as mm. well. Yeah. But you're actually t- just t- to uh, tell people exactly you were living in the stra- uh, strand, yeah, the front we, strand. Yes, we lived out this at uh, the strand across the road from the sea there, and yes. the sea used to come and visit us too quite often uh, exactly and yeah yeah, it, yeah. Uh, no I mean I suppose I'm really delighted to be down here today because while we live in a lovely place just west of Cork City a little parish uh, called Ballinora oh yes I know it yes yes, there, but, yes but somehow a big part of my heart is always in y'all and uh, it's it's great that actually Simon's win um, and success has has quite a lot of y'all connections um, going back many years now, I'm I'm nearly as old as you are, Noel. Uh, if that's not a terrible thing to well, say. Well, I but tell you, <laughs> sixty-two and counting, sixty-two yeah, and counting. Okay. So you can make it. You're about two or three years younger than me. So you can draw your own conclusions. Six six zero is, is yes. looming on the horizon. Yes. But uh, way way back, uh, growing up in the Strand, my uh, two friends I had who were in in my class in school were Sinjin Kilgallen. His dad, Rory Kilgallen, was in the Bank of Ireland here. Yes, yes. Agnes was his mother. And uh, Timothy Corcoran, whose father, Dan Corcoran, and his, his mother was Betty, but Dan was the postmaster here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now it's coming back. Yes, and yes, When yes. I was about 11 or 12, Dan Corcoran was moved to Bandon. And my first ever world tour was to get the bus from you all up to Cork and change in Cork and get another bus out to Bandon to visit Timothy. They lived in a, a little road called Laurel Walk outside mm. the town of Bandon. And playing around on the road there, across the road, there lived a family called Lucy's. 
and uh, now their daughter was a few years younger than me. Mm. Considerably mm. younger. Hence, yeah, hence, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. When you're 12, and when and you're, love blossomed. <laughs> well, you know, when, when you're 12 years old, you don't really want to be associating with somebody who's seven. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as the years went on, like, yes, yes. And, yes, and yes. coincidentally, well, mm. I didn't see Bridget for years again after that, but we were reintroduced by Bridget's then piano teacher when she was in Leaving Cert, uh, who was a friend of mine. I was in college then, mm. and his name was Ty Cotter, and his brother, Dermot, is the dentist in Yall, and better ah, as well. It's a small <laughs> world. So you yes. see, um, you know, the rest is history, but <laughs> but for that old Yall connection, we wouldn't be sitting here today with Simon. So. Ah, yes, yes. yes and I yes, think, yes, Simon, you used to like to collect uh, collect some plants in Yall too, back I, around, Well, you? we did, actually. Well, we, because I can't be excluding Mum here, because without Mum, I wouldn't be able to get to Yall, because <laughs> I'm not planning on walking or <laughs> cycling for that matter. <laughs> But, um, yes, Sea Beach, not Seaweed, as many people think that I'm saying. Um, but Sea Beach, which is, uh, it's a relative of, um, you know, cabbage. Spin- yes. You know, it's, 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 well, yes, yes, yeah, fair enough, yes. Uh, yes, it is spinach. Well done, you can see the scientists, parent. listeners, you can see, <laughs> this, you can see the scientists now coming out of yes, cancer. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my, pl- my parents seem to know more about this than I do. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, but... Um, uh, yes, it is a member of the spinach family, and it's it's locally abundant. I can't uh, understand why anybody, um, why people don't pick it because it's everywhere. Well, they used to. The carrageen moss was uh, yeah. wasn't yes. it? Carrageen yes. moss yes. actually was a great favourite, mm. made in a kind of a stewed form uh, years and years ago, and people yes. ate it. So, like you know, <laughs> the old <laughs> coast is there. <laughs> As parents, yes. you must be very proud of young Simon. Oh, we are. Yeah. I suppose yes, yeah. we are. absolutely. Yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful achievement, it is, isn't it? It's absolutely wonderful. Then you know beyond beyond our expectations altogether. Who yes. could know? You know, I was going up on, uh, we went up on Friday morning and the young scientist was on between Wednesday and Saturday and we went up on Friday morning and I was dressed in rather old clothes because I I was dressed for comfort for walking around all the stands yes. to have a look at all the projects. Yes. Yes. You know, and I suppose you couldn't possibly think that your son is going to win. There are 550 projects and I suppose the biggest cohort of projects are in the, the intermediate category and all these um, transition year students who have more time to be doing projects are mm. probably the, the big bulk of the people who are exhibiting, you know. Um, and looking at all those projects, it was... You know, it would be hard for me to pick out Simon as a winner from yes. them, you know. So um, the only thing I thought of completely selfishly, um, mm-hmm. getting up on the stage afterwards, you know, when Simon had won, was, oh, my God, if I had known this, inspiring. I'd have been dressed a bit better. <laughs> 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 you know, it wasn't about me. And as my mother every would say, you know, sure, every, every woman says that. Yes, every yes, woman says that. Every woman says that. I know, but so it was a bit overwhelming, I have to say, I can in am, a good way, I can well imagine. But, but, you know, fantastic. You know. I can well imagine. Yeah. I can well imagine. Well, Simon, you have a marvellous career ahead of you. Oh, and again, can I congratulate Congratulate you Thank on you a wonderful, much. wonderful achievement. Obviously, the judges were in the same frame of mind when they awarded you first place on this. Uh, the European is yes. on, yes. isn't it? In September. In September. In Dublin. Yeah. And you're obviously, yeah. have your name in for that. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Literally have your name. <laughs> Again, listen, I know time and tide waited for no man, as I said there. I'd love to chat to you more because you're wonderful people. And as oh, I said there, you. it's wonderful to have you on, Simon, here. And again, as I can I congratulate you from all the listeners here in Community Radio, all East Cork and West Waterford. A wonderful achievement. I often think in times like this, actually, the words of an old poem come to mind and it says, but still they gazed and still the wonder grew that one small head could carry all it knew. <laughs> Fair play to you, Simon. Congratulations. Thank and thank you very much for coming down to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Lovely to meet you as well. Take care of yourselves, lads, and thanks very much.